Joining me now is Jeremy Ben-Ami, president of J Street, which describes itself as a movement of pro-Israel, pro-peace, pro-democracy Americans. Jeremy, thanks for coming back on the show. This intervention by over a thousand academics and activists, Israeli Jews, American Jews, and more, not just referring to the apartheid regime, quote unquote, the Palestinians have to endure, but also saying that Israel's pro-Israel protesters, pro-democracy protesters, need to include ending the occupation as part of their struggle for democracy. That is a major intervention, is it not? It's a very major intervention, and it's really true. How can you possibly talk about democracy if you are not talking about the rights of millions of Palestinians who are living under Israeli control without the right to vote, the right to water, the right to build in their own communities, property rights, all the essentials of having the equal rights of your neighbor who's of a different racial and ethnic background. And that's what's missing on the West Bank. And you can't fight for democracy if you aren't fighting against occupation. So you have hundreds of thousands of Israelis this week and week after week, taking to the streets to protest Benjamin Netanyahu's power grab, to protest the assault on democracy from neo-fascist and racist parties in Netanyahu's coalition government. And then you have Hakeem Jeffries, the top Democrat in the House, with a bunch of fellow House Democrats making a visit to Israel this week to praise Netanyahu, to say he trusts Netanyahu, to praise Israel's democracy, to do photo ops, and actually ignoring the protesters, not meeting with them. That's not just a bad look for congressional Democrats. That's actually indefensible, is it not? Well, there, there's a willful blindness, and congressional Democrats are one piece of it. You know, let's be fair here. Republicans don't go to the West Bank either, uh, and the overwhelming majority of Americans who visit Israel uh, spend their time in Jerusalem, in Tel Aviv, they visit the Galilee, they enjoy uh, the good food and the beaches, and they ignore the reality of what is happening just a mere matter of miles away. And so this trip that AIPAC sponsored for uh, Democrats from the House, it's, it's part of a much broader problem that we have, which is that we ignore the realities of what's happening on the West Bank. And it's a reality for Palestinians that is aided and abetted by American policy. And that's where it comes back uh, to the House of Representatives and to the whole political structure. This problem on the West Bank and for Palestinians in Gaza as well. Uh, this is aided and abetted and facilitated by American politics and American policy. So, Jeremy, you mentioned that APAC, the lobby group, uh, sponsored the Hakeem Jeffries, the Congressional Democratic visit this week to Israel. It's a group APAC, which I know your group, J Street, doesn't get along with. Uh, you've pointed out before how APAC has funded GOP members who tried to overturn the last election, how they've used GOP donor money to try and unseat progressive Democrats in primaries. How much damage, in your view, has APAC done to our ability as a country to try and push back against Israeli expansionism, colonialism, and to support Palestinians under occupation? And why are House Democrats like Jeffries still so closely allied with right-wing groups like AIPAC? Well, you know, the problem is really deep in our political system, Mehdi. It goes to the issue of why do 90 percent of Americans want sensible gun control, but somehow the NRA manages to pursue an agenda that allows us to live in the conditions we live with kids getting killed in our schools. You have policy being driven by politics and often by a very limited number of people with a great deal of money and a great deal of power. And as long as our political system is driven by that money, it's not about just APAC. It is about the entirety of our political system being warped and our policies being warped by the influence of money in our politics. And APAC represents a small percentage of Jewish America that at this point is you know, not able to see what is going on uh, in Israel and not able to support democracy and that somehow thinks that it's OK to endorse insurrectionists who voted to overturn the 2020 election because somehow they support Israel. And that is a small percentage of the American Jewish community, but they hold a great deal of power because our politics are still dominated by large, influential, heavily funded uh, groups that are warping the policies we should be following. 
It's a great analogy you make there, because whenever we talk about APAC or any kind of lobby groups, there's a danger of kind of uh, slipping into anti-Semitic discourse about the Jews controlling Congress. But really, as you point out, it's about our entire political system being in hock to lobby right. groups. And we see it. We see it with the NRA and with gun control, but we don't see it when it comes to Middle East, to Israel, to Saudi Arabia and to other areas of life. Jeremy Ben-Ami, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I appreciate it. Thanks, Matty. Great to see you.